very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Arathan Goswami from Common Dairy PG College, Chirniri, Korea, Chhattisgarh. Today I am going to teach you Rupal Brooks' poem, The Hill. This lecture will have introduction, central idea of the poem, explanation of the poem, and salient features of the poem. English poet Rupal Brooke wrote in anti-Victorian style using rustic themes and subjects such as friendship and love, and his poems reflected the mood in England during the years leading up to World War I. He has often been seen as a poster boy for the idealism of Britain's early war effort. Unlike poets such as Siegfried Sassen or Wilfred Owen, whose poetry was colored by the mud and blood of the trenches, Brook never lived to experience the horrors of the front line service firsthand. Consequently, his writing is characterized by a patriotism and romanticism which is completely at odds with the poetry that emerged from the later year of the war. Rupert Brooke was born into late Victorian England's prosperous middle class. He was a high achieving university student, charmistic and popular in literary circles and beyond by the age of 25 he was a published poet and a fellow of Cambridge University. When the First World War broke out, he was quick to enlist. He died in April 1915. His posthumously published war poems cemented his reputation as one of the poets who most effectively gave voice to the ideals and fears of a generation at time of cultural transition. The Hill is a sonnet composed in Shakespearean sonnet form. This poem is composed in conversational style between two lovers. Beauty of nature plays a very vital role in this poem. The language of the poem is very simple and lucid. Immortality of true love and lovers is the key note of this poem. The poet conveys the message that death is the inevitable truth. The strength of love is young, laughing in the face of death. Central idea of the poem. The poem deals with the ecstasy of love in the first part with a twist in the end. The poet and his lover are thrilled with their blissful love and find the world highly enjoyable. They fling themselves on the windy hill and kiss the lovely grass. They feel they have passed through the glorious experience of love and hope to grow old enjoying the song of the birds and the warmth of the sun. Through their conversation, they reveal their faith in the success of their love, which enables them to face death undauntedly. They savor their victory over death and declare they have no fear of death. They hope to embrace death as easily as walking into darkness with the crown of roses, signifying victory. They feel proud and happy, but suddenly they become aware of the ghastly fever of death and one of them turns his face away with tears in his eyes. Death, after all, will always remain a fearful truth. The first paragraph is just building up the goodness of the landscape, how peaceful it is, especially when birds sing in when wherever they are laughing in the sun and kissing the kissing the each other the second paragraph is just short of reminding us about the first paragraph how nice it was but with the tint of darkness to an ominous background that is rose crowned into the darkness the last line is in a moment of thought the tragedy that is death turns the laughter into tears. The strength of love is youth, laughing in the face of death. The first stanza of the poem I am going to read and explain. Breathless we flung us on the windy hill, laughed 
in the sun and kiss the lovely grass you said through glory and ecstasy we pass wind sun and earth remain the birds sing still when we are old are old and when we die all's over that is us and life burns on through other lovers other lips said i heart of my heart our heaven is now one in this stanza the poet says the poem signifies the conversation of two young lovers they were busy in love making as in very first two lines hail breathless we flung us on the windy hill loved in the sun and kissed the lovely grass the lovers were enjoying on a hill which was full of fresh breeze and sunlight the phrase lovely grass symbolizes the young and beautiful beloved meanwhile beloved brilliantly explains that our glorious pleasure will pass out but wind sun earth and the birds will remain in world the repetition of the phrase we are old are old emphasizes the mortality of the human body the wind the sun the earth and the birds signify the presence of nature in human mind which is eternal in counter lover imagines about their death and states that everything would be left behind whatever is in our possession the story of love making would be told by future lovers of the world there is a equation in the lines through other lovers other lips said i heart of my heart our heaven is now is one lover fancies that heaven is won by them and now in their petition the second stanza we are earth's base that i learned her lesson here life is our cry we have kept the feet we said we shall go down with unreluctant pride rose crowned into the darkness proud we were and laughed that had such brave two things to say and then you suddenly cried and turned away in the second stanza now lovers think about themselves to be the best on the earth and will remain a lesson for future lovers of the world they will listen to the cry of our love making pleasure we have to keep trust for each other they will have to go down reluctantly towards the dark graveyard rose crown stands for the procession of burial people used to throw the garlands and flowers on the dead still they are happy and feel proud of their life of ecstasy to say these heroic words they breathless we flung us on the windy hill the beloved try to listen these words and impress impress the lover the salient features of the poem are that this poem is having 40 lines and it is shakespearean sonnet with two octave and sestet with the concluding couplet and the rhyme scheme is a b b a a d b a c d d c g g the meter is ambic meter alternate rhyme is used here and the stanza type is tercets thank you so much